thank for this opportunity to talking on ICHMA and how it is shaping the future of uh, ECTD. So the slide today, we will go through the agenda topics. And before we say, we'll mention just one disclaimer, that this material, some of the references have taken from ICH, and it's not intended for circulation. So if, uh, we were going to talk about six broad topics. One is the evolution of ECTD, how the current version look like, the future of ECTD, what's the status of implementation right now across the world, strategic implementation, as well as some of the South Korea specific discussion. Uh, so we're going to start with evolution of ECTD and we're going to spend some time here, but not too much because this is more of a historical thing. So ICH, the current version 3.2 was developed by the M2 expert working group, ICH M2, which was definitely based upon the CTD issued guidelines under ICH M4. And since then, from 20, 2009, there have been some requests about how we can change the format of the current version, how can bring new functionality, and to take that into consideration, an ICH M8 working group was created in 2010, which is still working on implementation of the next major version of ECTD, which is version 4.0. M8 actually worked closely with Health Level 7 to ensure that we are not just working on the pharmaceutical product, but we're working on RPS standard, which is regulatory product submission, which is much broader than just the pharmaceuticals. Um, the recent, most recent advancement that happened was the release of uh, latest version 1.4 at the June 2021 ICH meeting, which kind of defines the submission package that is now available for the implementation. But everything that is happening at ICH for this particular uh, side of things is with one common goal of uh, one desirable long-term objective is to have one global standard that uh, electronic message that can be used to exchange information on regulated product based on internationally approved and interoperable standards. So one standard that can be used uh, like electronically across the globe. Uh, as, as we all know, ICH target is to always harmonize and this is nothing different from that. Uh, so where we stand right now is in terms of ICH, as we all know, it takes five step implementation. Right now, we are at the stage step four, which is like adoption of ICH harmonized guideline. And in the next step, we'll see how uh, and when the, uh, the different countries are gonna be adopting these version 4.0 guideline for the use. From now, what we're gonna do, I wanna switch over to Isabel, my colleague, who will be taking us through the basics of ECTD, which is the current version of ECTD version 3.2.2. Thank you, Isabel. Over to you. Thank you, Avin. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Isabel from MSD. It is my honor and pleasure to be here and to share more about the current version of ECTD with all of you. So as with all submissions, it begins from the ICH CTD structure, with M1 being country or region specific, followed by the harmonized M2 to M5. So the term electronic submission is a broad umbrella term. So any single PDF file can be categorized as electronic submission, even if it is submitted through email. However, with the added element of table of contents, it becomes a NICE, short form for non-ECTD electronic submission. Then with the addition of XML and lifecycle elements, it advances to ECTD, which is the short form for electronic common document, technical co document. So the XML, so what is present in ECTD is that the XML manages the information more efficiently and presents the lifecycle attributes on it as well. It also acts as a navigation tool and it presents as a more efficient transfer of dossiers from companies to evaluators. So evaluators will only need like Adobe Reader for PDF as well as Internet Explorer or any other tool to support XML viewing. So it provides a convenient form for evalu evaluators and companies. So as mentioned earlier, the, these are the main difference between each electronic format. The volumized paper format is mainly supported in PDF files with no element for navigation until it has been printed out. Next, the NIST format utilizes PDF, table of contents, 
as you can see on Arvin's screen right here. And ECTD utilizes the XML technology as a navigation and display of technical elements. Now that we have seen the main difference between each format, we will look at the basic elements of the current version of ECTD. So there are six basic elements present here, and each element will be further elaborated in the subsequent slides. So firstly, we have the directory structure from CTD, and then we have leaf documents, XML backbone, metadata, MD5 checksum, followed by style sheet, which I will be elaborating on shortly. So firstly, the directory structure using CTD, since module 2 to 5 is a standardized harmonized format, it actually follows the ICH M4 R4 guidance with the link will be shared in the slides later on, as well as M8 for ECTD. Yeah. So on the right hand side of the screen, this is the expected format when one uses ECTD. First, you have the e-identifier that will be issued by MFDS for each specific product. It will be unique for the product and it acts as the identification number of the product specific to each company as well. Then it follows by the sequence number with the very first submission being sequence 0000. And then underneath that folder, you have the individual modules, modules 1 to 5. Utility folder, index XML followed by the MD5 checksum which should be expected of each and every single ECTD dossier. Yeah. So version 3.2.2 of ECTD taps on the ICH CTD structure, which clearly defines how it should be like for modules 2 to 5. For example, the screenshot on the right, if a product has multiple indications, it should be clearly stated in the outline for 273. Yeah. Similarly, for module 5, also seen on a screenshot on the right, each indication will have a unique folder type to it. On the left screenshot, it shows the metadata for module 3 for both drug product and drug substance. These are defined by the ICH and it has to be present in a unique folder as well. So now that I have mentioned that modules 2 to 5 is being governed and defined by ICH CTD, we have to think about module 1 as well. So module 1 is country specific or region specific. And in the case of Korea, it will have to be defined by MFDS to, to clearly define out the regional DTD. Yeah. The second element of ECTD is the leaf, leaf elements. So ECTD submissions mainly contain PDF files. Sorry, I have next slide, please. Thank you. So ECTD submissions mainly contains PDF files, but it also allows it also supports other file formats, such as work documents, XPT files, as you can see on the screenshots on the right. Yeah. So again, module one file names will have to be clearly defined by MFDS for the industry and the companies to follow. So the general rule of thumb is that only numbers and characters are, to, are allowed in the file naming convention of module one files and no special characters to be used. So the file names present will also should also only bear lowercase with no capitals at all. Yeah. So this general rule of thumb uh, will we hope that it will help the companies and the publishers involved to to turn out the module one specific for Korea. Yeah. So the screenshot shown here will be what will be expected of an ECTD dossier. At a very high top left corner is the e identifier followed by a sequence number, individual modules, and a utility vote folder at the bottom. Yeah. The third element of ECTD is the XML backbone. So in the current version of ECTD, version 3.2.2, we should expect two XMLs present. Firstly, is the regional XML, and the second being the index XML, which serves as the overall XML. Yeah. So these two XMLs, serve like two purposes. Number one is to display the metadata for the entire submission and the other being a navigation aid. So in the screenshot that you see here, you can see the XML di display different colors. So black being the ICH CTD structure, blue being the individual leaf titles that will be present as files, 
red bearing the life cycle attributes and green bearing the metadata. Yeah. And then expected, we will have the utility folder index XML and MD5 should always come together in the ECTE dossier. So underneath the module one folder, we will find the regional XML. So for Korean ECTD dossiers, we should be expecting KR hyphen regional. Yeah. So this screenshot that we are displaying here is an example of another country's ECTD dossier. So regional XML display the backbone of module one. And in this case, we have to be defined by MSDS. It bears the individual module one documents envelope information as well as module one granularity. On the bottom of the screen, we see the Australia TJ guidance on the envelope information, which eventually will have to be defined by MFDS and for everyone to be, to be viewing this document as well. Next, I'll be moving on to the next element on metadata. So metadata bears more information about the data being present. So module 2 to 5 being governed by ICHCTD, such as those present in module 3.2 and the mo me me module 1 metadata being governed by regional DTD. So we should be expecting metadata to be present for all ECTD submissions and it actually helps the ECT submission to be more clearly defined in this way. Yeah. The fifth element of ECTD is the style sheet. So it helps in displaying the content of the ECTD submission. For example, the screenshot that you see right here actually determines the color of the metadata shown in the slide earlier. The blue, green, red codes are determined by this style sheet. It involves a lot of coding, but rest assured that once the ECTD guidance is clearly defined, it will not be so daunting. Yeah. The last element present in ECTD submissions is the MD5 checksum. It actually ensures that no change in the file, in the files present in an ECTD dossier after checksum is calculated. In a way, it acts as a lock and key mechanism, helping in maintaining integrity of the files in all ECTD submissions. Yeah. So the feature is that if something has been changed, um, these 32 alphanumeric characters will change and then it ensures that all files are being integrated in that same dossier while transferring the dossier the dossier to agency. Yeah. Next, I'll be moving on to other concepts in ECTD version 3.2.2 and the advantages that are associated to it. So the very first concept that has its advantages to it is the lifecycle management. So it allows the product from the time it is being registered to the market to the time that it is being redrawn from the market to have its entire life cycle being captured in the application itself. So there are two areas of life cycle management, first being document level and the second being submission level. So firstly, on the document level, it provides the relationship of documents to one another and it allows documents to be submitted only once in the entire life cycle of the product. So managing this document life cycle is four main operation attributes, new, replace, delete, and append. So new means that this file is the first time it's being submitted. It has no relations to any other files that has been submitted before. Replace is such that it replaces an older version of the file and helps you to submit to agency the newer version of it. Delete is such that the file has to be redrawn from the application when we use delete and append being the PDF file associating with another PDF file that is already existing in the application. So what we see on a common basis are the top three attributes, new, replace and delete with append not being commonly seen at all. Yeah. So for example, for sequence 0000, it is being submitted as a yellow files. And then in the next sequence, 0001, you have the orange file replacing the yellow file. Yeah. And then in the next sequence, you have the blue file replacing the orange file. And then 
the fourth sequence having the dark blue file replacing the light blue file. So in the latest struct information, which bears all the most updated version of documents, you will only see the light blue, light blue file, which has replaced the orange one, as well as the dark blue file, which has been submitted as new in the application. Okay, the second concept, a second sub concept of the lifecycle management is submission level. So it allows sequences within the application itself to be related to each other so that evaluators will have an easier time uh, when evaluating it. Yeah. So on the screenshot on the right, I'm just going to take the audience to just one or two examples with the very first sequence being the new chemical entity is the very initial sequence that has been submitted before. And then say, for example, if the agency comes back to you with some questions, you will submit your next sequence, sequence number two, with some responses to the agency's question. So that in that way, you will relate back to sequence number one with some supplementary information and in, re in your response to them. Yeah. So in terms of viewing ECTD and as well as its life cycle management, um, there are three commonly used ways to view an ECTD. Number one is the sequence view. So you only view the documents that are being submitted. Second being cumulative view. You see every single document that has been submitted in the product's life cycle from start to where it is right now. Yeah. And then third being current view. It only shows everything that is the most uh, latest drug information as displayed in the screenshot earlier. So if I have to reiterate something to the audience today, it will be once ECTD, always ECTD. Once you have submitted an application to the agency that you want to do ECTD, there is actually no turning back. Yeah, so agencies and companies will always have to consider the technical specifications behind ECTD before officially launching it. Yeah, so this will apply to the next version, version 4.0 as well. And then before submitting it, the ECTD dossier to the agency, we will always have to run the validation. So these are some common validation findings that should be addressed or um, information that is being collected. So number one is error. So errors must always be addressed before submitting it to agency. And then second one being warnings. It should be addressed and eliminated whenever possible. Yeah, and then information will just be provided as an FYI only. Yeah. So this provides an overarching picture on the benefits of ECTD. So why do some agencies consider switching to ECTD is such that because it provides like life cycle management capabilities of a product. And in a way, because of the structure and the specifications behind ECTD, it allows evaluators to evaluate a product quicker and resulting in earlier product launch and faster approvals as well. Yeah, so shown on the screen are other benefits which I will not dive too deep. I will pass the time to Arvin who will be speaking more about ECTD 4.0, the next upcoming version for the industry. Thank you. Over to Arvin, please. Thank you, Isabel, um, for taking us through the current version and how the current version looks like. And it's very important that we understand the concepts of current version uh, before we try to understand the newer version because the newer version is a little complicated and more more features and it's more it's it's something that we're going to bring in a lot of advantages as well. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go through the current version, the new version that is coming up. And the way we have designed the presentation is basically to keep it like in same structure so the audience here can make a, a comparison when they kind of remember what was presented in version 3.2.2. So in, in, so like Isabel has mentioned, there were six basic elements in the current version. We also mentioned that there would be six elements in the new version, version 4.0. And these new versions would be files and folder, uh, similarly like what we have there. Files and folders are important to organize information. Then the second one is the control vocabularies. You can compare it something with the metadata information that Isabel talked about, which is different in 
in, in defined ICH in, in model two, three, five, as well as by region in module one. Um, remember there was an XML, which is an important component of ECTD. Uh, there were two XML, but here there is also an XML, but it is a merged XML that one common uh, information exchange message. So we should call it as 4.0 XML schema. Um, there's a context of use uh, concept that has been uh, uh, been, been organized against something like a metadata on how you organize the information, uh, then define the relationship between the table of contents heading and the reference document. We will want to talk in detail about this as well. The fifth concept, we will want to talk about the region specification on the how the regions are defining the Model 1 implementation guidelines is also one of the important components when you talk about the new version. Uh, another thing that comes as a transition mapping message a message which is important uh, to kind of transition the dossier from the current version to the new version of ECTD. So let's move on, take a deep dive into the into some of the new concepts that have been rolled out in this version. And, and reason we can talk about why and we'll also talk about the associated advantages of this new feature or concept. So the new concept is a submission unit. So the new version would be something like a three layered structure where there would be an application on the top followed by submissions, which are like an, which like an regulatory activity of that particular in that application. And within that activity, there would be submission units, like the package of submissions that would be submitted um, to the agency. And there could be multiple submission within an application and there could be multiple submission units within a submission. So each submission unit that goes to the agency would contain an information on a submission and an application. So the, the screenshot on the right, it shows you that the applicant will submit a submission unit, but that submission unit will gonna have an information on a submission and an application. And the same kind of message would be available at the applicant side as well as the regulator side. So what does it what it does is basically opens up a possibility for a two-way communication because it's been organized the same way in both the sides. Uh, although ICH have excluded the two-way communication from the business case right now, but this is something which can be adopted in future or maybe depending on the region which is working with ICH and adopting the guidelines. But yes, it does open the communication pathway. In the current version of ECTD, you will realize, and as we know, we can only send a dossier to the agency, but agency have to respond to us via different means of communication, like through emails, or phones, through through post. But you know the the real transaction of the messages is not happening in the common platform. And ECTD 4.0 or RPS might bring those uh, opportunities to live, and we might see something happening as a two two way communication in future. Obviously a lot of advantages because then you don't have to communicate outside and all the interaction between agencies and the applicant will be tracked in this common location. And moving on to the new concept, which is called the context of use and associated advanced lifecycle management that it brings. So context of use is nothing but it's like the placement of a document within a table of content or a heading. And it provides information regarding usage of a document and its life cycle, example of content to be replaced. So it's kind of identify how the document would be located in a DOC heading and also provide some other information on when the life cycle attributes are provided. Now we make some comparison from the current version. So if you can again refresh your memory, you know, Isabel mentioned there are four life cycle operators, new, replace, delete, and append. But in the new version of ECTD where it brings a lot of advantages is it kind of simplify it and make it into three attributes. The new attribute will now be called as active, which is like, as the name suggests, what is the most active version of that particular document? The replace attribute is where you will see a lot of added features and advantages. Uh, the, the, the most important one being that within a context group, you can replace one document with one document, which is was available in the current version as well. With the two new features, you can replace one document with many documents, and many document can replace one document. This is, has been displayed in the screenshot below, where if you have sequence number one, where you had three document, document one, two, and three, in the sequence number two, if you have a document number four, 
which can contain the, the, the content is something that can be replaced all the three documents that were previously submitted in the context group, then document number four can actually replace the three documents altogether. And you don't have to replace one by one as we have to do in the current sequence. Similarly, if you have a document number four, which now needs to be replaced by five, three different documents, which is document five, six, and seven, and they are all part of the same context group, then you have an ability to replace document number four with three different documents. Now, so we can ask, okay, why we want to do that? Why we would not do that? It all depends upon the situation, how you are authoring the documents. If you need information to be presented in three different documents and it makes more sense to present the information in three different documents, it's easy for reviewer to review, then why not? We have this functionality now to replace three documents with, a, with one document. The only, the only thing to keep in mind is you cannot replace uh, files from one context group to the other context group. They should be of similar nature, like you can't replace, obviously, uh, module five files or module three documents because they are of different context group. Uh, so this is an example, but you have to remember like they should be of same context group. The third life cycle, which is delete, is now will be called as suspended because in reality, even in the delete life cycle, the word delete could be misleading. In the delete life cycle, we do not delete anything as such from the application. What we do is we kind of make it, we kind of indicate that this document is no longer should be reviewed by agency, but you cannot physically delete anything once submitted. So that's why a more better term, like suspended will gonna come in picture. Append life cycle, which we already know is not recommended by, by agencies, it will be altogether removed from version 4.0. Then another new concept that I wanted to talk about is document reuse. And I think this is one of the most important concepts and it wanna save a lot of time and energy and make the process more efficient. The reason is once you have a document submitted, the ECG 4.0 will gonna give you a, an option to use that document across the board. So when I say across the board, means you can use a document across the same submission unit. You can use it across a different regulatory activity, or you can even use it at a different application level. So just imagine uh, if you are using a document, let's say a company registration certificate is being required by you to submit it to your agency every single time you make a submission, and we do have such documents then rather than you creating that document all the time, submitting it in all the submission, you can just submit it once in one application. And in all the future application, you can just refer to that document that was submitted in the submission number one, and you will never have to submit that physical file again. The reason why, why we are able to do that in the new version, that each document in the new version would be governed by a unique ID so the name of the document will no longer be the identifier. It would be the unique ID that would be assigned and that will be the important identifier and that ID would be unique that it can be used, it can be retrieved from the agency system until and unless that has been submitted once. So it also allow the reuse of metadata and one added advantage that you can imagine is now since because the document titles are not fixed, it's all governed through a doc ID if you have made a type of example in the screenshot below, if while submitting in a sequence, you had made a mistake and you have made it manifest process control, and now you want to change it to manufacturing process and control, in the current version of ECTD, there's no option to do that. You can't change what has been submitted. But in the newer version, there would be an option to make changes like fix the typos, and, and make, make the spelling corrections, like in this case, manufacturing process control, because remember, when the name now is not defining, is not coded, hard-coded into the XML, but what is hard-coded is, is the unique ID, which then can be referred, uh, and, and, and what appears outside as a, as a display name can be changed without changing the ID in the background. So this is one of the advantage, again, that version 4.0 will gonna bring, and we know that when publishers work, we tend to make mistakes, there's a lot of time the error happens and in the current rigid structure of ECTD, there's no way we can, we can rectify it, but the new version will gonna enable that features as well for us. We're gonna move on and gonna display how the document reuse really looks like and the practical application of it, especially in terms of group submission. In EU, we know there are a lot of group submission 
uh, with different member states and and you have to submit almost same type of files in in work sharing grouping procedures and uh, there's a lot of uh, duplication of effort there so what this new version will gonna enable is so in the screenshot you will see there are there's a three application one two and three you will see in the first application only that we will gonna submit module one two and three folders with the physical files like this but once you have submitted this the other two application will no longer require us to submit the same files that were submitted in the initial application and we can just refer those files through submission unit.xml and since this is, this XML have a reference or unique ID of the physical documents submitted in first application, the other two applications will automatically going to refer to these PDF files that were present in the first application. So in this way, you will going to save a lot of time, a uh, lot of space, a lot of energy, and it's going to make process efficient because you are in principle submitting one document only once, and now you have to reuse across the applications. Moving on, there are a few other new concepts and uh, associated advantages. So the other one is a keyword and keyword definitions. Now, since we have to organize the information in a way that we can reuse it and we can make it make it very organized and, and kind of use across the applications, so we need to make sure that we are using some terms and definitions which are very systematic, which are, which are defined by CH, which are allowed uh, so that we can control what we call a, say them. So these are called as controlled vocabularies. So these are nothing, these are not very new. Like we still have controlled vocabularies in ICH. Like if you're using a preclinical study, you have to use certain species name and you only have to use allowed names in, in that uh, while submitting a sequence. And also these are also region defined. Like in US, you also only have to, you can say US NDA, you cannot call it as an OMA. You can only say CTA as an IND in US, you can call it CTA because these are the defined vocabularies. Now the new version, we are kind of uh, building on this and we are defining more control vocabularies that will help us uh, systematically arrange the information and provide additional structure. So the new vocabulary in the version 4.0 is like category events, the document types, and the study order group. So if you have experience working on, let's say for the study tagging files, which in the clinical study reports, we have to tag every file based upon, upon the study, based upon the type of document. Like you have a, a tagging file for a synopsis, you have a tagging file for the study report. All these will be replaced by a new vocabulary so that all the files will have a special way of being recognized so that when we kind of refer them to different application, they all globally organized and harmonized and have a common way of categorizing. So uh, it also provides a way that we can reorder the study group. It provides a mechanism to order studies when a study ID and state title keyword is used in the application. Uh, the, these are the keyword like control vocabularies defined by ICH. The other thing is a keyword definition, which are defined by a user. For example, company will gonna define who's a manufacturer, who's a company one or company two. Obviously these are not defined by ICH, but there's some guidance around how it should be used. Now what happens with this control vocabularies and display information is again, it gives an ability for us to, uh, to change or correct things that have gone wrong. So in this example, if you have experience using ECTD, then you will uh, quickly understand that let's say if you make a mistake while putting your display item or metadata and your company name is ECME Manufacturer, but you forgot it you made some mistake typo and it came as an ace manufacturer now in the current state there is no way that you can change this heading until you kind of delete all the documents inside uh, and then you submit a new out new outline and then start submitting the document again because in the current state if you change anything in this heading it will gonna create a separate folder structure a separate outline that we call and then you have to move all the documents from the current outline to the new outline and there's a lot of complications there but in the new version what will gonna happen is uh, because the display information is not that is governing how it is coded so there would be an opportunity for you to change and correct the things from let's say ace manufacturer here to acme manufacturer because this is a correct display name again this is a flexibility we say that ECT is very rigid, but the new version is giving it a little bit of flexibility on how we can manage the information in future. Moving on, 
the another new concept is the merged XML, which is uh, you remember Isabel mentioned like there are two two things. One is an index XML, which is uh, governing by ICH, and there was a regional XML. But in the newer version uh, 4.0, it only allows one XML to contain everything: the region information, the context of views, document references, keywords. Everything would be present in one XML, and it's easy to manage because it will be all governed through one one single file. Uh, so in the new structure, it will want to look something like this. You will have an application level folder. You will have sequence number, and then this is an XML which will have everything: module one to module five. And you don't really have to have a, a util folder will not be present. Neither the regional XML would be present in a edge module one. It will be all part of one XML only. And this is how it's going to appear. The regional information is also part of the for, of the governing XML. So these were the uh, important concepts in ECTD, and I also talked about some of the advantages we're going to bring along. Uh, and and now we want to see, okay, we understand these are advantage. We are going into current version, and how do you then move to the new version? So the new version movement is going to enable by a transition mapping message. And what uh, ICH has done is they have kind of made it a little bit easy for for the industry to move it. And one of the added advantages when we were going to move to a new version, there would be no real baseline. The baseline is like when you move from a non-ECTD format to an ECT format, sometimes agencies ask us, us to provide all the document that was submitted till now to create a baseline of a dossier. And then only we can move to file new, new then only we can go ahead and move the new files. But in the current version, but in the transition from the version 3 to 2 to 4.0, there's no such requirement. There would be a technical baseline without the need of a physical document. And then uh, the sponsors can uh, start using the 4.0 messaging from the next sequence onward. So one time transition, and it will be one time transition of content, but will not replace a decision on baseline. Mapping previously. Previous doc IDs to new context of your ID will allow reuse in ECD 4.0 message. And, and there will be no need to modify previously stored sequence or dossiers. So it's kind of an incentive for, for the industry on making this movement from version 3 to 2 to 4.0 through this messaging without going through a lot of rework on right, a, lot, a lot of uh, rework that has happened right now in terms of when we are asked to do baseline. So we have seen what changes, uh, but we have to remember that certain things will not going to change even if we go to the new version. The, the standards, the basic standards remain the same. The file and folder naming convention will still remain. Uh, you, you should have the length characters, the path name, the folder hierarchy still is as per the ICH. The concept of checksum will remain, but it will want to change from MD5 checksum to uh, SHA 256 algorithm. And also maintains the compressed archive, like ability to uh, to to zip the folder tar extension, and so the ability to convert the titles, for example, in Korean to English through the through the implementation of new ECTD as well. So these are the things that will not going to change, and we will still going to continue with the new version of ECTD. Just to give an idea of snapshot of how it will going to be, it will going to look like is basically you will see. The, this is a conceptual model. You have a submission unit on the top. Then you have a category event, which is like submission. Then you have a priority number, the context of use, the document reference, the keyword, related context of use, a sequence number, submission, application, document, and keyword definition. They are all will be part of one, uh, one, one package that will go and will going to define and enable a lot of advantages that we have. we were talking about just now. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to go to the implementing status of ECD 4.0 around the world. Although ECD 3.2.2 is also not implemented everywhere, and agencies are working towards switching it to the new version. And uh, there's a lot of work happening. But some of the advanced uh, ICH countries, uh, EU, US, and Japan, they have already implemented it from a decade now. And they're looking forward to move to a new version of the obvious advantages that ECD 4.0 brings and some of them that we talked about today. So in the future slide, what we can do is uh, we can look, talk about 
what, what how the ECT 4.0 is going around the world um, and where do we stand right now so for 4.0 this is the abstract from the ICH website which kind of mention uh, the status of the countries which are moving towards this direction and uh, I've been into this domain from quite some time and we were there were discussion that EC 4.0 will come from 2016 then we said it would come from 2018 but obviously with the, given the complexity and other priorities uh, that we realized that uh, it, it didn't happen that soon um, it's, uh, it didn't happen so soon so that's why you know now the, with the new data set coming in and new versions coming in the ICH has defined this and the countries are now adapting it to move to a new version and some of the countries are also thinking about should they go to version 3.2.2 first and transition it to 4.0 or they should go directly to 4.0 since they have not not uh, have implemented yet so this table give you an idea on you know how we stand so you will see like europe they have not indicated the implementation timeline yet but fda and us have kind of Say that from 2023 it's, it's voluntary uh, for uh, for the companies to kind of submit a new version but 2028 is where they are thinking it become mandatory similarly for canada it's a little bit aggressive they're saying 2026 is mandatory japan 2026 mandatory but japan is i think the most aggressive in terms of saying that uh, their intention is to start from 2022 the voluntary uh, a mechanism of submitting the ECTD if agents if the countries if the sponsors want they can submit starting from 2022 itself so it's medic also and then TG Australia has also shown intention to start from 2023 so this is a snapshot of how it is going on right now and uh, and, and obviously this might change but definitely this is a good item to keep track of when you are trying to compare where your country stand in terms of implementation uh, moving on from the concept side, now we're going to move on some of the strategic implementation on what needs to be done when you really uh, want to implement ECTD in, in your country or in your company. Um, so there's something that needs to be taken care of. We call it like strategic implementation thinking two step ahead. So again, this is a technical concept. You need some kind of uh, understanding technical knowledge as well as sourcing resourcing in your organization before you can move so the thing is uh, when you think about implementing ectd in your organization uh, talk about think about implementing standards uh, prepare to adopt ectd for all existing as well as a new product there may be requirement from baseline so you might have to be prepared for that it could be resource intensive uh, develop the product strategy in a way that it maximizes able to reuse. Uh, there are certain things like moving to ECT is not just at the publishing level, it's a mindset change. For example, you have to start thinking about how do you author a document which can be used across the region so you have minimal rework. Look for a ways to reuse one region submission for another. And you might have observed, like we said, the current version of ECT is a little inflexible. Uh, so we really have to adhere it to properly if, if we plan to do so. Uh, first concept is, you know, we can't go back. So once ECT is always ECTD. So you have to be very sure that you, once you go in the direction, we are adhering to it, and because there's no coming back. Uh, last minute change, last minute changes in, in ECTD sequences are difficult. It means you will have to have a process in place so that you can have republishing required. It has to be done, and there is an ability for the fast turnaround around at your organization if you want to really uh, take full advantage of ECTD and also submit ECTD sequences in a very short turnaround time. Um, there are some preparation required from the tools and technology perspective. Uh, for example, you will need validators, you will need the publishing tools, you will need uh, some of the other tools that for creating hyperlinks and bookmarks, you will might need a viewer uh, at, the, at the health authority and sponsor level. As sponsor only, you just need you might need, uh, so this is at the HA level where you need this, but at the sponsor level, you might also need easy to rebuilder, something that you can build easy out of. And you might also need a document management system uh, and other, uh, other plugins to effectively build the ECTD sequences. So you have to prepare in terms of your tools and technology. You have to be prepared in terms of your processes. You also have to prepare in terms of, uh, uh, of doing the baselines and other, other stuff that comes along with it. 
there are some good submission practices that we have mentioned now that will not going to change even with the new version. So these are the good practices, how you should format the document, what font should be used, how the table of contents, how hyperlinks and bookmarks should be created, uh, how the scanned document should be managed. This is all mentioned here. For example, no password should be used. So these are the good practices that if you use, the chances of rejections are less as well as uh, the, the viewability by the authors is also appreciated because they can review the dossier easily. Now let's move on to some of the South Korea specific discussion in the interest of time. And you'll see that this is something that we have kind of thought from our understanding on what's the current state and what can be done. So we know that there have been a release of module one specification from FDS. So I think the finalizing of module one specification and, uh, and asking industry to comment and knowledge transfer is would be a key. Then probably, there could be a stage where we can go through and pilot phase where, uh, where the companies are invited to kind of do some pilots and then expansion of pilots so that, you know, smaller, bigger pharma, everyone can take advantage of this and they can test the processes, the tools and technology are there and, and probably then release of uh, final guidance with this implementation date would be something that would be a next step. And then I think we suggest like start with the current version of ECTD if the technology is already in place and then also there is an intention to move towards the ECD 1.4.0. So it's like in preparation that is required both from the industry side, from the agency side. And if, if there is a strong collaboration, I think this becomes easier and it leads to a path to a successful in ECD implementation in future. Um, other things that we noticed from our experience, and again, this could be different with different different organization, there's nothing that is highly recommended, it's just our observation, uh, is site registration documents uh, required for each NDA in, in Korean application make it a very complex thing. So probably considering as a separate activity, then the product registration could be helpful or there could be a clear uh, layout of the structure in module one on how the registration should be handled. Uh, module and specification including in folder and file structures need to be carefully defined. It's always good to have enough clarity in product information. So one of this, one of the challenges that we face with some of the uh, countries that have gone to ECTD that the product information management was not handled carefully and it kind of messed up the life cycle. For example, in the initial versions in AUTGA, there was no clear indication for using an approved label and that was introduced into a new version when the approved label was a separate, a separate section for approved label was introduced. So managing product information in module one is very critical and our suggestion is that those should be clearly defined into module one specification. Uh, MFDF also need to consider providing enough time for the software vendor to update the tool with the standard validation criteria. There should be a minimum six months of period that we say that should be required to make this change. Uh, data sets requirement could be different in different regions. And if there is an expectation to have a data set requirement, necessary data, then those specifications should also be clearly defined. Uh, we also have to consider about the multi-language document that will be go in Korean and English and how these be managed in the ECTD setting. So these are some of the uh, South Korea specific discussion. Again, you know, the regulations might have changed. I'm not on top of that, but these are some of the standard from our experience is a thing that could be considered while while we try to implement ECTD in, in, our, in South Korea. Uh, with this, this is the last slide. We just want to say thank you uh, for your active participation and listening to us today. And if you have questions, we are happy to take them now or you can also mail us to the to the email id that is listed here